what excites you about the next two years of your work? And also, talk a bit about having, you know, the Psychedelic Center. I mean, even be able to say those words, you know, associated with a place like Imperial College. I mean, it's, it was weird to read that. Yeah. You know, and when I saw it, you have a great video on YouTube that like shows all what you're doing. And, you know, you guys were always on my radar and nut, but I didn't see this coming. And it was like, wow, you guys actually did this. Yeah. And you did it, I think, before anyone else did in the world. Um, I don't know, maybe first talk about that and, you know, I'm sure that makes you really proud. And, yeah. And what are the things that you're excited to work on? Yeah. Well, it's, it's, uh, it's a wonderful development um, because for so long, uh, despite, you know, having a growing research team and getting some, I think, quite important studies done and published in some good journals and this kind of thing, it always felt that we sat... Um, almost outside of, of the mainstream scientific ef effort, which will sound funny for those who might think, oh, you know, well, Robin's such a scientist, you know, uh, he just, just needs to lighten up. But for the people in the mainstream science, they'll look in and think, oh, we're, we're kind of loose with our science and deal with very abstract constructs like the ego, you know, you need to tighten up your, your constructs. And so, but uh, so, yeah, that cr can create a bit of a chip on your shoulder because you think, no, no, I'm a good, I'm a good scientist. I'm just going after something that I think is important, and it's hard, and we'll crack it in the end. Um, but maybe some of these things don't, shouldn't be entirely deconstructed, you know. Um, so anyway, uh, w what's happened is that uh, people have started becoming obviously more interested in the research and can see the value and how it can help people, and got in touch. And, and this happened around a time that I was trying to kind of uh, solidify, I, I guess, kind of my career and career direction. I looked into the possibility, actually, of moving institution. I live in Oxford, um, so I, I was looking into Oxford. But things developed in such a way that Imperial wanted to house this. Um, and that made sense because of all the, the development work and the kind of trailblazing that had gone on to get institutional support within Imperial College London. Um, and then the seniority could see that there was a lot of money coming, potential money coming in. And so there was a decision to be made. Do we finally properly acknowledge this and actually try and um, give it the conditions it needs to really flourish? Or do we keep on with this sort of, you know, turning a blind eye to it, that it, it's not even there and doesn't really exist? And thankfully, they said, we're going to embrace it. You know, sure, you can have a centre. Um, you can have your logo and, uh, and, and we're even going to give endorsements to your, your fundraising efforts, which is what's happening now. And sure, let's break it right down and not kid ourselves. Money talks. And so that's, that's played a role here. But when I'm sat talking to the relevant seniority at Imperial, I don't think they're um, playing me along when they show genuine interest and start saying, I can see it now, actually. Um, this really is something exciting in, in psychiatry. Um, so to have that level of institutional support is pretty unprecedented. I've talked to other colleagues at other major institutions doing great work asking, you know, it, it, actually I apologize and I said, you know, you probably look at this and think it's all a bit jumped up and we have the same thing and we just don't name it. But actually they said, oh no, Robin, no, we've been trying to get a center ourselves for, for quite some time and we're hitting the, you know, institutional barriers like you do when things, you know, go up the hierarchy. Because there aren't any psychedelic centers in universities in America. Not yet, right. to my knowledge. Right. Yeah. And, and so apologies to any who, who say, oh, no, we do have that now already. There, there might be research groups that are allowed to say that they're groups. Um, Is that the federal laws, too, that, that hurt that in the U.S., the stigma still in the U.S.? It, I actually think U.S., I mean, of course, it has that fascinating polarization, um, but the progressive component in, in the U.S. is streets ahead of the U.K., those progressive states, you know, right. where you get, you know, 
to think where we are right now with cannabis in the UK, and then you compare that to where things have been in the States. Right, because cannabis is still illegal here. And yet more, or less, more or less, yeah. Well, it is illegal, yeah. and medicinal cannabis isn't, isn't being prescribed, really. Right. Yeah. Um, despite some you know, reluctant changes having come in recently. So um, really exciting times, yeah, having that, that opportunity now to really kick on. Um, that's, that's good.